I thank the uh, gentlelady, I thank the chair. Um, Mr. Harris, is there any um, anything that stops Congress from passing an appropriations bill um, at any point after a CR is adopted that would, uh, whether it's an omnibus appropriations bill or all 12 appropriations bills. In other words, if a CR is adopted of any length, whether it be three months or a year, um, can Congress continue to do its work, pass appropriations bills, and override the CR? Uh, well, the gentleman makes a good point. You don't override the CR. The CR actually uh, has an expiration date for funding, just like our expiration date for funding right now is September 30th, yet we pass appropriations bills in June. In fact, just to correct the record on the VA, and, and somehow Republicans don't care about veterans, that's the first bill we brought to the floor, June 6th. And it passed the House on a party line vote. That means that every Republican voted, and by the way, the amount for VA medical care funding was at the President's budget request. Right. It went to the Senate where it has languished for three months. So if we're worried about who cares about veterans and who doesn't, I suggest you call Mr. Schumer up and say, hey, remember that bill we passed, we sent over there on June 7th, because we passed it on the 6th, it went over there on the 7th, and it sat there. The fact of the matter is, it's just that it's an expiration date. It's not the date you have to pay. I mean, we, we don't have to pass those bills on right. March 28th. We could pass them in December. We could pass them in November. We could pass them in January. In fact, if the Senate begins to do its job and conference with us, pass some of the bills on the floor, we sent five over, That we sent four because I think Homeland Security is still over here because Senate refuses right. to take up a real border bill, H.R. 2, not, not the phony one that, that was put up in the Senate, uh, if the Senate takes up those four bills that are over there, we could conference them next week. We, right. could, we, could, we could answer all these defense questions, all these things that the, the gentlelady brings up, uh, the uh, ranking member brings up. We could address all of them in a negotiation on the House-passed defense appropriations bill because it's been sitting in the Senate. The Senate hasn't even brought their defense appropriations bill. Now, again, I will reiterate. Mr. Austin seems to have misplaced the criticism here. The criticism should be on the Senate not doing the job it should be doing with the defense appropriations bill. And so uh, just putting a finer point on that, the debate about a expiration date on the CR, in this case, March 28th, is really just a debate about when we're putting the pressure point, right? It's not a debate about whether or not the appropriations bills can ultimately get finished or not. That is a separate question. We have five appropriations bills that we've passed. We have four that are sitting in the Senate. The Senate has passed how many bills, to the best of the gentleman's knowledge? None off the floor. Zero. And so the Senate, or the House has passed four. We have a fifth that's sitting at the desk. We have others that we've been debating. We've gotten them out of committee. So then the question is, is the gentleman aware, uh, what, four times in basically my lifetime since the mid-1970s have we passed appropriations bills, 12 appropriations bills on time? Is that correct? It was before my time here, since my time here, we have never passed all 12 bills on time. Right. And how often, rarely do we pass 12 independent appropriations bills even late, correct? Normally it's an omnibus or a CR. That's not saying that's good. I'm saying that's the way we've been doing things. Is that correct? That is, and uh, the gentleman wasn't here when I mentioned that earlier in my testimony. That is the way we do it. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. Right. But now the expectation here is that you don't pass an individual appropriations bill. No matter how important defense is, or the VA is, you put them on a shelf somewhere until you get a minibus or an omnibus. That's not the way it's meant to be. So, but without you're absolutely right, just a non a, a nonpartisan question: House's fault, Senate's fault, Democrats' fault, Republicans' fault. Are we going to pass twelve appropriations bills in any way, shape, or form by September thirtieth? Uh, Independently. <laughs> I don't believe we will. On either it, side. But, it, right. but again, there are four bills. The claim is the Republicans haven't done their job. We've done our job on four bills that sit over there. And, and I'll remind the gentleman that those four bills total up to more than half the spending. Had those bills been processed by the Senate, gone to conference, and come back to the floor? Then we'd be in a position to potentially do a smaller well. CR, having done those preparations. I agree. But, but point being, whoever's fault. Again, the Senate has passed zero appropriation bills. We've passed five, four, one held at the desk, four sitting in the Senate. It is unlikely that we're going to have the 12 independent bills passed and signed into law by September 30th. Is that a fair statement? That's a very fair statement. And the gentlelady is nodding in agreement, correct? Of course. Right. Again, regardless of fault. 
So my point of saying that is, to those that uh, question the CR, I don't like CRs. I don't like CRs as a way of doing business. Um, but we've got to figure out what to do with one in this context, in this environment. So then the question becomes, what's the expiration date? Uh, question for the gentle lady. You expressed earlier, I think, I just want to make sure I understand for the record, that you think it ought to expire on a shorter time. I think December. December. Is that, 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 didn't you posit that we, earlier? The way we've done that, this in the past, in terms of the negotiation, we were able to sort out the differences uh, by, you know, mid to later, but in December, getting it done before the end of the uh, calendar. Okay, and do you know, just for purposes of trying to figure out what that would look like, right, in terms of putting together a, what would be almost certainly an omnibus, right, probably not 12 independent bills, um, <laughs> then in addition, what would be the likelihood, of, do you know what the timing is of Ukraine expiration and whether that would be a part of the discussion on the funding? You know, I, 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 I think that we're talking about the, the bills that are currently uh, before uh, the body that we, we have, as you pointed out, right. there are five bills that have been passed. There, there are an additional seven that still need to be. One would have to be sitting down with, with, with the view of getting it done in the way that we have done in the past. And that means, uh, you know, hard negotiations. And what we did the last time in, in terms of doing this, and it was still carried over to March, we got, you've got to be done with the, 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 the extraneous, non-germane riders that are part of the bills. You've got to focus in on what the, the, uh, the FRA said in terms of an increase of 1% for defense and an increase of 1% for non-defense. If we follow the rules of the road, we could get this done in short order. So, but it would be an omnibus, almost certainly. An omnibus, a minibus, et cetera. And, and We're so, not going to do right. individual bills. Which, which is one of those things. It goes back to my point about timing. Right, it goes to my point about picking the date. We, we pick dates, just for the average viewer out there, mm -hmm. we pick dates based typically on a pressure point. We don't pick, because you can always pass the appropriations bills. We could pass them tomorrow. We could do an omnibus in December, even if we have a March date or a year, full year CR. I personally would rather just have a one year CR. Just set it, go ahead and fund it, and then, and then we could debate it. But, but the, the reason I think the gentle lady's shaking her hand, the ring, others, is that if you don't set the date at a certain date to try to trigger, Oh, oh, we're going to run out of money, then there's not a pressure point. And the reason typically it's done in December is not like, oh, some joy, we want to get this done before the next calendar year. Our fiscal year is September 30th. It's because it's Christmas. Well, we should have done it by September 30th, right. and we could have. But it's always done. Well, but the Senate's past zero. Let's go back to that. Again, not casting blank. I'm talking here for the good of the country. I'm trying to figure out because Americans scratch their head and they go, what are you doing? And then you look up, and whatever he always happens. So let's go back to the Ukraine question. The reason I asked the question to my gentleman, uh, gentleman, my friend from Maryland, did we not start the Ukraine funding with a, basically a $45 billion funding in December on an omnibus two years ago before we had the plus up this last spring? Yes. And so if you're an average American sitting out there going, well, do I want a CR that is expiring on, say, December 15th? setting up a pre-Christmas pressure point wherein we are deciding how to fund government for the rest of this fiscal year, right before Christmas. And the question of Ukraine funding expiration is now out in the press that it's going to be running out of money by the end of the year. Would there not be a potential pressure for there to be a grand bargain of significant spending in an omnibus spending in December along with potentially another large pot of money for Ukraine. Would the gentleman from Maryland agree that based on your experience in this town, that that is not an insignificant likelihood if a CR is put till December 15th? Uh, it's not only an insignificant likelihood, but it disenfranchises. The idea of coming back in a lame duck session disenfranchises the American voters who will have made a decision right. in the beginning of November perhaps to take this country in a different direction. And to me, that's the reason why, again, we don't know what the outcome of the election is going to be, but let's set the deadline into the next administration, into the next Congress, uh, because I think that's just fair for the American voters. They're going to make a big decision this fall, and it would be a shame if, we, if this Congress, in a lame duck session, did things like that. Uh, again, with, with the pressure of 
a debt ceiling, with the pressure of a uh, Ukraine funding, with the pressure of uh, Israeli funding. I mean, you could, you could right. do the whole laundry list. Uh, what it does is it allows a lame duck legislature to make major decisions, and I think that's just not right for the American people. I agree. So let me move then off of the uh, spending issue to the SAVE Act issue. Is the gentleman from Maryland aware that in Texas on August 26th, they announced uh, the removal of 6,500 non-citizens from the voter rolls in Virginia in August? The attorney general announced 6,303 non-citizens since 2014. Virginia has removed 11,000 non-citizens. Alabama has removed 3,251. Ohio just announced 597. Uh, and I could go on and on down the list of states. North Carolina, 1,454. But importantly, is it not true that under current law, the way the courts have applied the NBRA, that if you are a state like Arizona and you say, we believe and have passed a law saying we want to ensure documentary proof of citizenship to ensure that only citizens vote in American elections, that in the case of Arizona, the courts have said, sorry, you can't do that for federal elections because the courts have interpreted it as violating the NVRA because the NVRA sets out certain documents and materials that you can collect. So in other words, the federal law has been interpreted by federal judges to prohibit states from ensuring the enforcement of the law that non-citizens uh, not vote that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle present to the American people as an already established fact. Is it not also true that it's an already established law that you're not supposed to be here illegally? But yet, but yet we have 20 million people here. Is a gentleman agree that that is a problem that the SAVE Act sets out to address? So, and again, given the way uh, motor voter registration occurs in Maryland, I wouldn't be surprised if there were thousands of, of illegal aliens in Maryland who were registered to vote and who, who, who should be taken off the rolls. Uh, but the, the, the upshot is that Congress thought that a belt was enough, and the court said it's not. We need, we're going to have to put suspenders on this, too, and that's what the SAVE Act does. It clarifies the law so that the court cannot go to a state like they did in Arizona and say, you can't do this. I think that clarification needs to be made because there are states who care about whether or not illegal aliens vote in elections. Um, one other question. So uh, we had a, 143 of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle b opposed a bill to overturn the District of Columbia's law allowing illegal aliens to vote in local elections. Now, that's D.C. We have authority over D.C. as Congress. So we put legislation before. Now, 52 Democrats voted for it. I mean, I give credit where it's due. But 100 to this point about, well, it's already illegal to vote as a non-citizen, but yet we have 143 Democrats who are leaning into wanting, wanting to allow DC to have illegal aliens not just vote, but were being recruited to vote, targeted to vote in what you would call the local elections for DC. Uh, so is it not uh, true that we have jurisdictions across the country, San Francisco, Oakland, D.C., like I just mentioned, New York, and other places that have been actively seeking to recruit and register non-citizens for claim to be state and local elections. So now you're doing that, and then at the same time saying, don't worry, it's against the law, but just trust me in terms of the voters for the federal elections. Is that not the state of things, and is that not what the SAVE Act sets to address? Uh, so that, that's right. It, it creates an administrative nightmare. So, for instance, there are jurisdictions in Maryland that want 16-year-olds to vote in local elections, especially school board elections. But you can imagine, I mean, we talk about a voter roll, but in fact, you'd have to keep multiple voter rolls. And we know that some states are better than others at keeping voter rolls uh, with integrity. Uh, so it sets, it sets a, a standard that is necessary and, again, that the American people expect. They do not expect a person who crossed the border illegally to have a say in federal elections. So last question for the gentleman of Maryland, and I'll yield back my time, um, because it has been raised an issue about the timing of the SAVE Act and whether it would have an impact on this election. Um, and let me share my con the concerns raised by my friend from Kentucky and others about, you know, how this plays out in terms of timing. Um, and, you know, lack of joy of saying that we're at a place where we haven't passed 12 appropriations bills. I wish we had. 
I wish we weren't doing a CR like we always do, um, but we are where we are. And so the question here with respect to the SAVE Act and timing, uh, would the gentleman agree, by and large, I'll posit some things that I think is important for everybody to know, is that um, the bill would be effective upon enactment, is the way it's drafted, that it will still be um, effective because a number of states, 22 states, allow for election day registration. So we got to keep in mind, people say, well, people are already registered. Well, that assertion is correct that a lot of states have already registration, you know, and dates that, 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 that have already passed, but we have same day registration in certain states. Um, we have a significant um, uh, impact where there's other states that have expired, for example, uh, Nevada is same day, North Carolina, I think, is um, same, uh, same day registration permitted during early voting. Pennsylvania has 15 days before the election. In other words, there's still a lot of time between now and, and election day with respect to those issues. Um, is that, is that, uh, does the gentleman agree that that's important in the consideration with respect to timing? Um, I would agree. And not only that, there is no bad time to do this. Uh, because, again, the American people actually think that the protections are in place so that illegal aliens are not voting in our federal elections. And the fact, and the fact of the matter, which the, which the gentleman from Texas has brought up, due to the Arizona ruling, indicates that those protections are not really in place. So there is no bad time to do it. This should have been done. Honestly, it should have been taken up by the Senate when it was passed, when this bipartisan bill... And remember, this was passed on a bipartisan basis. When it was sent over to the Senate, shame on uh, the Democrat majority in the Senate. They should have taken it up. And again, I will reiterate, I suspect they didn't because it actually could pass. Because an uh, overwhelming majority of Americans agree with the idea that people in this country illegally should not be voting in a federal And election. the gentleman is aware that the legislation requires states to remove non-citizens for their existing roles to the, through the election. So in other words, if we were to pass this into law at, by the September 30th deadline, we will have funded the United States government, including our men and women in uniform, uh, and including all the things that are concerned about through March 28th, giving time for a new election to have transpired and a new set of priorities to be established, uh, not doing it during the lame duck, and we would have set up a situation in which we'd have the SAVE Act, uh, which is supported, the, the issue is supported by 80 plus percent of the American people. And it would then give time still to and require uh, to clean non-citizens from their existing roles through the election and the tools. It gives them access to databases they don't currently have a, re a requirement and access to have access to. Um, and so I think that's an important uh, p piece of this in addition to additional penalties uh, for federal employees and state and local election officials that register non-citizens to vote. It enhances those penalties so that you can make sure that we have a belief in our elections. Final point that has been made about the VA um, for the gentleman from Maryland, uh, is it not true that we basically have the VA secretary saying we have more people applying for this than we thought so that those of us who had raised concerns when the PACT Act was passed and we were saying this was going to create a system that was going to be very difficult to predict and administer and raise those issues and even some of us voted against and didn't want to vote against because we have constituents suffering from burn pit uh, harm. But we said, this is going to be a problem. And now are we not sitting here looking at the, you know, Piper being here that has to be paid and this is the problem. Would the gentleman agree with that? And then I'll yield back. Well, I do. And that's, that's why uh, the, the Congress, in its wisdom, ha has $112 billion in advanced appropriation to, uh, to, do, to do this. So th this is not the, the emergency that it is uh, being, uh, again, being held up as. And, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, evidence of that is that the Senate hasn't taken up the VA appropriations bill yet. And that would be a, a, a totally appropriate vehicle to deal with this issue on a more permanent basis. But this CR, because of the $112 billion advance appropriation, it is not essential to be doing it at this time. It's actually more appropriate to do it through the normal appropriations process. Thanks, gentlemen. I yield back.